First guest tonight uh, on our last night in town has been making movies and TV shows since your mom went to prom. You know him from Ozark, Arrested Development, Silver Spoons, you name it, he was on it. His super popular podcast is called Smartless. Let the bait mania run wild. Say hello to Jason Bateman. the roar of the crowd more than you. Than Will Arnett. Than Will Arnett, Than Will yeah. Arnett. This is so much better than L.A. Just move to New York. <laughs> this is like, I mean, if you guys could see the situation in L.A., you guys wouldn't get it. Yeah. It's, it's just you, like, just this, uh, the five rows right there. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I know, and yet it's interesting you saying move to New York because you live in L.A., so you want me to leave. No, I want, I want to move to New York. Oh, you want to move to New York. And you won't do that unless I go. Well, yeah, you got kids in school. That's not so easy when you're, uh, when you're a dad, is it? I could go back and forth. Because <laughs> when you were a kid... You were, you know, you were raised on television. You didn't even have a house. You were raised on the set of Little House in the I Prairie. I lived inside of a little TV box. Yeah. yeah. But we did, we did get to come to New York a little bit. That, that's when the love affair started. Tell with me it. about it the was... first time. Well, um, this is a late show. I got, so her name was... Oh, no, no, I mean... <laughs> what I mean by that is the first time you were in New York. In New York. Yes, not in a woman. Mm -hmm. His name was... <laughs> Oh, you're talking about visiting. Yes, visiting, yeah. How old? I can't do another bit of hey, No, no, that, yeah. um, uh, I, I was, I was probably like, I was probably, <laughs> I know that I was with, I think I was with my dad. Uh, I was coming to do some press like this. I think I was probably 12 or 13 or something like that. And it was, I mean, you got to see, I was born in Rye, New York, but I left when I was two. So I don't really, but that was like my first experience to like, Seasons, like the guys actually have seasons here. You right. know that was that was nice. And for you, it was just pilot season, and that's <laughs> it, right? Season. <laughs> uh, and it's much more uh, colorful here as far as uh, navigating the sidewalk and driving and whatnot. Um, you see stuff here. There was. Um, I remember walking up Sixth Avenue once. This was later, and a guy just um, not peeing, doing the other thing, middle of the afternoon, on, <laughs> on a Wednesday. On the sidewalk on 6th <laughs> Avenue. He couldn't at least yeah. have had the decency to save it for the weekend. No. But that was, but I was, I was prepped for something like that because uh, I think on the first trip, I remember uh, I was driving with my dad in the cab. I think we're probably on our way from the airport to the hotel. And we stopped at a red light and uh, I was just looking out, the, looking out the window and looking at all the foot traffic. This guy just gets his clock cleaned for no reason at all, knocked right off his feet. With a, with a punch, and I turned to my dad, I said, did you see that? He goes, I did see that. You gotta be, you got head on a swivel in New York City. <laughs> I was like, all right. And then <laughs> like, like an hour later, we're out walking around on the streets, and he says, oh, look at this, quite a way. we got a mis magician over here. Look at that. he's got like a card trick going. So we walk up to that, and of course, it's in, in, in retrospect now, it's three-card money. <laughs> so he's playing three-card money when, you know, you get your, your clock clean financially. Yeah. And my dad, like, lost 200 bucks, and his wallet was stolen while he was standing there doing What? That. So yeah, Mr. Smarty, keep your head on a swivel. He didn't know what the hell he was doing either. So I can see why you, this love affair with New York began, is that you were... Well, yeah, I mean, all, the only thing that is nerve-wracking in L.A. is uh, if they don't have something gluten-free, um, uh -huh. or, you know, traffic. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You did uh, your podcast, Smartless, which is, uh, is wildly entertaining. <laughs> Here in, you did a bit, two live shows here in Brooklyn, right? We did. I f forget the name of the venue, but it was something big and beautiful like this, and it was, it just blows our mind that people are listening to it, let alone come out live for it. You were very nice enough to come on when we were in L.A., and it's like, it's an hour a week. 
on a laptop. Like you're doing, you're working yeah. your nards off five days a week. You need a nice podcast. You get some <laughs> stupid ass like Will Arnett and some uh -huh. sweet angel like Sean Hayes, and you'd be done. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but also it's fun to do this, and it also it's fun to do it in front of people. So the the idea behind your podcast, it, the one really like different thing is one of you will book a guest and the other two don't know who the guest is. Right, that's the cut down on, on having to research. And who'd you have here in Brooklyn? Here in Brooklyn we had uh, AOC and we had David Letterman. And David Letterman, which is... You had David Letterman on the other night, before last. On Tuesday night, yeah. He Does was he still look like Galileo? <laughs> <laughs> he looks good. He looks like Dave yeah. Letterman. He's not, he's not to be trifled with. Were you nervous no. about having Dave on and interviewing Dave? Because he didn't yeah, interview I mean, you it before. Was, it's, I mean, it's very nerve-wracking. I'm sure nerve-wracking for you, too. Very you, much Hero so. for me, hero for you, hero for all of us. Um, and I was very shocked he said yes. And because the odds of him even knowing who we are, me, Will, and Sean, is ju I, don't, I just don't he get it. He was a big Hogan family fan. I I've don't heard. buy that. I yeah. don't buy that. I, uh, I did his show a handful of times, but I still was convinced he had no idea what my name was. And Were you really? He, for real? For, honestly. Uh -huh. And then he sits down on the couch when we're doing the, the, the smartless thing out here, and, and I start asking him questions, still trying to figure out if he even knows what my name is or whether he's just here because publicist said do it. I said, I really love doing your show the few times you had me on there, and he said... Uh, Something, something like, well, it was probably better for you than it was for me. And I, <laughs> I, said, I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, uh, you really left a mark on that show. So I was like very excited that he did remember me, but then quickly brought down down to earth because he said, because you will just not shut up. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? He says, you're the most long-winded guy ever on a talk show. So I'm paraphrasing. Uh, <laughs> But he's like, as I'm going on right now, he said, you just keep going and going and going with a story. I said, well, Dave, I once saw you on an interview that said, you know, it's the guest's job to talk. It's not your job to talk. It's, you know, it's like the guest isn't doing the host a favor by being on the show. Jimmy's doing me a favor by having me on the show, so I got to come with stuff prepared. So I'd always have, like, these stories prepared, and I guess I went on a little too long, <laughs> notoriously on his show. So they have to change the amount of time they go away to commercial and stuff. I was mortified to hear all this. <laughs> but still, but, but yet, you were yet known, buoyed that, that he even knew who I was. You were known as the guy who talks too much yeah. on a talk show. They couldn't book a second guest. <laughs> I, was, I was a double-block guest. <laughs> Well, you have a lot of good stuff. In fact, there's something I want to get into. This is a fun game we play at dinner sometime. Jason Bateman is here. His podcast is called Smartless. We'll be right back with Jason. On America, discover the book. Open up a brand new world. So take a peek and let it speak. You'll see how life can be. Come on, America, discover the Discover the book, lift your spirits oh so high, high. Words so real, words so true. forgot about that when they decided to make the Bible like hip hip the Bible up by calling it the book I didn't know that I you didn't know what I didn't know what it was I uh, the, you know we're not bright people us actors we have we have a team of people that keeps us smart and from getting hit by traffic and I think probably a publicist said this is a, there's a very important, great, sort of probably charity, something, whatever, they framed it, and I was just, yeah, 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 I'll do it, whatever. So I did, I did that, I was in, out, clearly. There wasn't a whole lot of research done there. Um, and, but, uh, so it was during the Hogan family, and I remember after the end of one of the tapings, you know, the audience files out, um, and uh, one, some woman, like, put her head behind the curtain, and I was walking back to my dressing room, and she goes, hey, Jason! I turned around, I go, hello, and she says, uh, How's Jesus? <laughs> How's your relationship with Jesus? I mean, I had no idea what she was talking about, obviously. I said, oh, he's not returning my calls. I don't know. It's just something like that. And she goes, she goes, that's great, smartass. Why are you doing stuff for the book if you don't know Jesus? And I said, what book? She said, the book. I was like, oh, 
is that what that is? <laughs> I mean, I, my publicist was like, she said, you got to do something for the book. And I thought, and you know me, I don't read. I'm not proud of that. I'm not a reader. And I just thought, oh, anything for a book that'll make me seem smart since I don't read. The so, books, yeah, so reading. I, well, if Vagoda's doing it, why wouldn't you? I think I, I might be the only person still alive on that. <laughs> no, on that. no, Lisa's oh, fine. Lisa Welch is still alive. Yeah, yes. Glenn Campbell has passed away. Abe Vagoda. God bless. Yeah, gone. Yeah. Well, I'm the least religious person in the world. Wow. I, I, I wish I was more religious. I just, I'm not bright. Yeah, yeah. Well, believe me, uh, Abe and Glenn are rooting for you. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure from up above. I hope. I think people forget how many. I know I don't forget because I am constantly asking you questions. I what I like to do is just run random names, mostly from the 80s, by Jason. <laughs> and then I say, did you know this person? Right. And it's, it's remarkable how many people you know. And now this has not been prepared in any way. You don't know what I'm going to ask you. But I'm going to run through some names. If you don't know them, just pass or whatever. But I think you probably will know what them. What if I pass on all of them? Well, then it'll be have terrible. To cut this piece. It's okay. You tend to be long-winded anyway. <laughs> um, Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah. I got a yeah? little. Yeah. Well, I was out here in New York doing uh -huh. uh, some press, some affiliates, some, something or other. I remember being at a large table uh, uh, backstage with Mr. Cosby. <laughs> I remember my, uh, my mother being between me and Bill, and he was very chatty with my mother. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lee Majors. Never met him, but ooh, I'd love to. Barra Fawcett. No. Emmanuel Lewis, Webster. Yes. 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 Emmanuel Lewis was doing Webster on the Paramount lot where my sister Justine was doing Family Ties and I would like to cruise around and bop into other stages and say hi to folks. And so I got myself a relationship with Emmanuel Lewis and we were buddies for a minute or two. What would you guys do together? You know, like, I don't know. I think it was just before video games. So we're, I don't know, read comic books or something? Uh-huh. Something stupid. Okay. Uh, but hello to him. Hervé Villachez. Tattoo from Fantasy Island. No, no, but I would have loved to have done a Fantasy Island oh. just before my. You time. never did Fantasy no. Island? No, I'm not that old. F you, Jimmy. I, I just could see you running around on deck and like you know like Gavin McCloud going like, "Hey, son, slow it down." That's love. That's love boat. Oh, I would have loved to have done that too. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Ricardo Maltoban. You never met him. Ricardo, no, no. Nor Gavin McCloud. Okay. Uh, Hulk Hogan. No, but I did hit a screaming line drive past a sprinting Lou Ferrigno at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> That's pretty good. During Hollywood Stars Night. <laughs> Does that count? I He's played, a wrestler. I have played baseball with Lou Ferrigno as well. He's and, not much of a right fielder. Well, yeah, but he's big. You know, he's, he's got quite a physique, obviously. Um, also call me Brian the whole day. Um, <laughs> Michael Jackson. Ricky Schroeder and I almost ran over Michael Jackson with our bicycles. Um, <laughs> this is while we were doing Silver Spoons at Universal, and we'd need to have our bikes because kids got to play. And Michael was there to see him. To uh, he was. I don't miss him. Hey, he was a fan of the show and a fan of the Ricker. And uh, he was coming onto the stage while we were zooming off, and uh, almost took him down. Wow. Did he moonwalk out of the way? Nice. This is talk show quick. Yeah. Wow. Should I go one more? Let's go one more right. round. Mr. T? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, uh, my, my mother uh -huh. uh, worked out with Mr. T's trainer. <laughs> and, and that's how I got to meet Mr. T. I mean, it's just so random. <laughs> I gotta retire. I gotta get out of this. No, this is, this is no. Like, I feel like a circus freak. No, you're no. You're a circus of the stars freak, is what you are. I would have loved to have done that. You um, didn't do. I circus would have loved to have done Battle of the Network Stars. Why don't we bring that back? You got juice here. At, you know, I mean. I would love to have that Battle of the Network Stars. You're not on a network though, so you would be teamless. We'd have to give you a show of some kind. Wouldn't there be a streaming team? Oh, I guess so, but that sounds terrible. We the face. Yeah. We, we would dominate. <laughs> hey, will you, you want to hang around because we're going to do something that we do back in L.A. Because, you know, in L.A., there are a lot of marijuana shops. Like, oh. at, next to every donut shop, there is a marijuana shop. There are shop. more dispensaries in L.A. than Starbucks. True. And so what we like to do I is hear. go out in the street and see, um, oh, use our powers of deduction to figure out who is high 
And less importantly, who isn't? And we're going to do that with Jason Bateman when we come back. We'll be right back. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. 